Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today we are out in the garden. We're gonna do a big harvest. I'm sitting here on my sweet potato patch where I planted sweet potatoes in a raised bed. This is my first year growing sweet potatoes and we're gonna dig them up today and we're gonna to see together how well I did. I I actually had to Google myself when to harvest sweet potatoes because this is my first year, I don't know. And there was a couple things. One, do it right before frost. And the second one was if your leaves start to turn yellow, which I was gonna wait and actually harvest them in a few days. But we had a 34 degree night last night. And it actually, I don't think it, I don't know if it frosted because my tomato plants and pepper plants look fine, but you can see there is definitely damage on these leaves. So I'm glad I decided to come out here and do this. We also are gonna be harvesting some potatoes. I think we need to get all the green tomatoes out of here if we have time today and the peppers. Now that I'm thinking about it, we've got some cucumbers that need to come out of the ground. We've got some winter squash that need to come out of the ground and Almost everything needs to come out of the ground now that I'm sitting here thinking about that with you. I, I've been greatly anticipating this all year long. This is one of the things I'm the most excited about growing. So I sure hope they did well. One is sticking up out of the ground and it's super teeny tiny. So I hope they're not all teeny tiny like the one I see. You'll notice my chickens hanging around with me this time of year. I like them to hang out with me. I don't care if they eat anything in the garden. It's kind of fair game. And if we have time, I'll cook dinner with you and you can hang out with me in the kitchen. I'm gonna throw something together. I don't know exactly what it is gonna be yet. I've got some pizza dough out of it and some chicken I cooked yesterday and I thought it'd be fun to maybe make like those Costco chicken ranch things. So just hang out with me and we're gonna have a good time. So reading online, what you should do is find where the main plant is, so where you actually planted your sweet potato start. So like mine is right here. And cut away the vines. And I'm gonna do that in this whole bed. And then we'll come in and we'll dig the potatoes up all at one time. That way, when you go to dig the potatoes out, and there's some weeds, you know where the potatoes most likely are gonna be and there's less likely gonna be damage on the potato. I heard you can eat sweet potato slips and they're absolutely fabulous, but these have been damaged by frost. So instead of eating them, we're just gonna let them give nutrients to this bed. And now we are going to start digging up these sweet potatoes. To be quite frank with you, I am a little worried because I just found this when I was pulling it up. And this is itty bitty. I hope this is not an indication of our sweet potato harvest this year. And that right there is why you want to get them out before it starts to frost because that will go bad if that gets frost on it. So let's get digging these sweet potatoes out. I'm going to move the irrigation system out of the way here. If I told you I wasn't nervous about this, that would be a lie. I want this to work and I feel like it's normal for gardeners to think that they're, I don't know, going to fail because I pull that up and I see nothing. So I know that that slip was right here. So let's dig this out and see what we get. Oh, I see something. Oh, shoot. Stabbed it. Well, there's one thing. Of course, I stabbed my first one. Shoot. Here's one more, little. Oh, I see one. I'm trying to go as deep down as I can. Oh, oh, there's some color in there. Oh, that's not a sweet potato though. I got some red potatoes. These are volunteers, because this was a potato bed last year. There's some potatoes. Not what I grew, but something, I guess. <laughs> These are so small. I 
This dirt is wet, so it's heavy. My potatoes are super small, and I'm thinking as I'm digging these out, I have a couple thoughts here. I think some of the reasons why these sweet potato slips are so small are for a couple reasons. I planted them out about two weeks or three weeks later than they could have been planted due to shipping issues with the slips. I ordered these slips from Johnny Seeds and they had some issues with the growers and so they were shipped to me late. And the quality of the slips were poor. Some of them, probably about 25 to 50% of them died and they refunded me the money for that. So I think what happened was by the time the slips got regenerated and got enough energy to start growing the potatoes, way too much time had passed and they just didn't have time to size up because the slips when I planted them, they didn't have any roots or anything. They basically were just a stem, a piece of the slip that then had to root itself and then had to grow the potato and then had to size the potato and it just did not have time to size the potato. I am disappointed with the size of these potatoes that I'm pulling out of here. I am going to do a better job growing my own sweet potato slips because when I put the sweet potato slips in the ground next year, I want them to already be rooted out. And my sweet potato slips when I planted them were not rooted out. So that's just one thing that I'm thinking for next year. <laughs> potato I didn't plant, sweet potato I planted. <laughs> I just found another huge spud and I, I dug this up and I couldn't figure out what it was because it's kind of green and it's a walnut and this is why I find walnut trees planted all over my garden because the squirrel planted this walnut. All right we are done digging up the sweet potatoes in this bed. Definitely a learning experience. Let me show you. This is the largest sweet potato that I got that I grew. And it's probably the size of a small sweet potato you get at the grocery store. The average size is about this big. That is teeny tiny. This will not go to waste. We are gonna eat all these sweet potatoes as long as they're good, I guess. We haven't even tried them yet, which we'll try together for the first time. I did get some really big regular potatoes, which I'm pretty happy about, that were just volunteers in there. A couple takeaways from digging up sweet potatoes and growing sweet potatoes for the first time. One, I'm gonna to try to um, exclusively grow my own slips next year. I'm probably gonna be investing in a little bit higher quality uh, grow lights. The ones I bought were affordable and they worked, but they didn't quite get things going as fast as I'd like. So that's number one, because my goal is to try to get these sweet potato slips in the ground sooner than I did this year, because I definitely think part of the reason these are so small, because there are a lot of potatoes in here, they're just small, is that they did not get in the ground soon enough to size up in the amount of time I needed. I'm also probably gonna do more research on it so that we can see if there's anything else I can do, but I definitely want bigger sweet potatoes next year. The next thing is it would be a lot easier to dig sweet potatoes up if the ground was dry. It is hard at this time of year where I live um, in Washington State that at this time of year it rains a lot, so it is hard to dig. So it is hard to find a time when the ground isn't wet, but that was definitely a workout digging up these sweet potatoes in the soggy wet dirt because it just adds a lot of weight. Am I thrilled with this harvest? No. Is it a total failure? No. I guess the only failure would be is if I tasted them and they tasted terrible, then that would be probably pretty disappointing. But I think next year we can push this and we can grow more food out of a 16 by four foot sweet potato bed. Now let's go dig up the sweet potatoes that I have in the other areas of the garden and see if those areas did any better. I don't think the straw bale garden is going to do any better, but I'm wondering if maybe the sweet potatoes that are buried in the roost out method are going to do better. This is a potato bed and for sure I'm going to find potatoes in here. Like here's one just plop right there. So I'm going to dig and see what I can find. My chickens did go through and dig some up for me. Ew, I just found an ant's nest. So this is the bed that I've been working on digging these potatoes. And you know what I almost did? I almost used this to collect my potatoes in. 
I was gifted actually a couple of these from you guys and I am so excited to use this. Let me show you what this is. This is the coolest thing ever. It's called a Rue apron because look at this. It's got this pocket here. And what it does is it's got these releases here so that you can take it like this and go like this in your wheelbarrow. And there's a hole here. Instead of using my kitchen apron to do this, we're gonna use this Rue apron for the first time. I'm pretty excited about it. I think I'm gonna love this. I wanna say a huge thank you to everyone that sent me one of these. It means the world to me that you guys would take time and money, honestly, to send me a beautiful gift. So thank you so much. If you guys are interested in checking out this apron, I'll leave a link down in the description box. Like I said, it's called a Rue apron and I think it's gonna be revolutionary for me. <laughs> so let's keep digging up these potatoes. So far we have a huge pile that I need to get into this apron. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm loving this thing already and <laughs> I've only used it for a matter of 25 seconds. You see this right here? This is a wine cap mushroom that my girls dug up. I see one over here. I planted these mushrooms in the spring and I've already harvested quite a few of them. I did a dinner with these. If you guys want to watch that dinner and me cooking them, I'll leave that link in the description box. But these are pretty cool. This is also a wine cap mushroom that has gone way big. See how big that is? It's loving it under this tree. I'm going to let them grow and I'm going to let them release more of their spores and kind of inoculate this whole area under here. I posted me picking these mushrooms on Instagram for the first time and a few of you guys had had a little bit of concern that how do I know these mushrooms are safe and that you know I'm not going to poison myself or my husband or my family and the reason I know that is because I planted these spores. I inoculated a bunch of areas in my garden. These are called wine camp mushrooms. I can't remember the name. I think it's called like Northwest Spores or something where I ordered them from. I'll leave them down in the description box so if you want to get your own. They're the easiest mushrooms to grow because you don't have to have some special hardwood to grow them. They just grow in wood chips, which my entire garden, if you can see between all my beds, are just pure wood chips. So that's a great way for me to try to maximize my growing space is to grow in between my beds. And I already have wood chips there, which is where they like to grow. So it's kind of been a cool win-win. And I just discovered last week that they started growing. So I have no idea if it's a one-time harvest, two times harvest, this is my second harvest. So, so far I know there's two harvests and I did miss some. I don't know how long the season is. I don't know anything about that. I just know that I'm pretty excited that I was able to harvest some of those mushrooms with you. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get back to these potatoes. So let's see how this works. This is the first time I'm doing this with you. So I just unhook this thing from here. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. You just hook this back like this and now we're gonna go harvest potatoes. I have some potatoes over here too. So we're gonna dig these up as well. tiny that's okay I'm gonna clean this bed up a little bit while I'm in here this is my celery patch right here and it's done terribly not because of the celery but because of my lack of attention to it and these were looking really good I was gonna rip them all out but these two plants look like they're growing new celery so I just took off all the rotten stuff because there's a lot of rotten stuff I'm gonna let it compost in place here and then I'm gonna see what happens with the celery. The ones that bolted back here, I'm gonna pull these up. So in this celery patch, this is the celery plant I was just picking around, is that plant right there went to seed and it was laying over on these wood chips. And you can see all these little sprouts in here. These are all a bunch of little celery plants that sprouted. And then right here is my black beans weren't too far from here and I think these are some black beans that sprouted and obviously the celery or these aren't going to do anything at this point because we're going into winter but that's kind of interesting. So I still have the straw bales that I need to harvest the sweet potatoes from or need to I guess is kind of a funny word. Could 
kind of maybe sort of harvest from from just knowing what I know now from harvesting this stuff where the, the plant part looks really lush. I don't even think I'm gonna worry about harvesting from the straw bales because I really don't think there's gonna be anything worth harvesting. I'm looking at them right now and they're just so pathetic and sad looking compared to what I had in this bed. So I don't think there's gonna be anything in them. There is a book, I'll leave it down in the description box, that is all about straw bale gardening. One of you guys had recommended it for me and I haven't had a chance to read it. That's gonna be my winter homework. And we're gonna do straw bale gardening and we're gonna do better next year, but I need to learn the art of straw bale gardening. So, so we are officially done harvesting the potatoes and sweet potatoes for 2021 garden. I wanted these potatoes to do so well and I had a feeling they weren't going to be doing that well but in the back of my mind I was like no they're going to do well <sighs> they just didn't do well so <laughs> next year there's always next year sweet potatoes are cheap I can buy sweet potatoes but I, re I really 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 want to have my own sweet potatoes so oh well learning experience that's just every year we're gardening this is like if you're new, this is only my second year. I'm no expert. So we're gonna learn together. Next year, we're gonna do better. And yeah, next year we're gonna do better. <laughs> and I wanna get all the green tomatoes, red tomatoes out of the garden. And I wanna get all the cucumbers up and peppers. So let's go do those. I know those are gonna be more successful than these darn sweet potatoes. They sure threw me for a loop. These are my cucumbers here. And I thought cucumbers were a lot more frost uh, sensitive than this plant seems to be because this plant doesn't seem like it had any damage. I love this cucumber variety. Cucumbers are not my favorite vegetable, but this is called burpless cucumber. And if I can find this in a seed catalog, I bought this as a start. I definitely want to grow these next year. Or if I can't find them in a seed catalog, then I'm going to see if I can find them at the store as a start next year. I have so many cucumbers on this plant. There's probably like 15 cucumbers on here. I'm not gonna bring them all inside because we can't go through that many cucumbers right now. The thing about these cucumbers is they get so big. I mean, look at the size of this cucumber. This one's too big. I'm gonna give this one to the chickens, but this is kind of the general size they get. And they're really, really good. They do have these little spines on them, but you just kind of run your hands along them and they go away. I'm gonna put them in this basket here. My father-in-law bought me this basket as a gift and this is very special to me, I just got it. And it is a handmade, look at this, handmade basket from the Amish and he just gifted this to me as a beautiful gift. So happy to have that and we're gonna put our cucumbers and peppers in here. I think we're gonna have a cucumber salad for lunch, for dinner. It's October 12th, so it's kind of crazy that we're still getting cucumbers. If you're wondering what I'm listening to, it's an audiobook. I always have audiobooks going all the time, 100% of the time. Basically, I'm either listening to a podcast or audiobook. If you're curious what I'm listening to, I will leave it down in the description box. And if you want a free 30-day trial to Audible, it will also be linked down in the description box. The next plan we are gonna do is we are gonna go through the two pepper beds. We are gonna pull out any and all peppers we find, regardless of size, regardless of ripeness, they're coming out today. All right, pretty good harvest of peppers. I'm happy about that. I got a fatty squash in my apron. There's probably about five or six more to go. So before we get the tomatoes, let's get the spaghetti squash. A little bitty, oh. This has to be eaten real quick because it looks like there's already some mildew on here. Not rot, but there's a little scab on there. It's not soft or anything. So I don't think it's gonna rot, 
but it needs to be eaten. Yeah, that's a little soft there. So it needs to be eaten quicker than not, so we might be having some squash soup in our future. I would say that this Rue apron is a winner. I have, I think, four of them, and I'm so excited to have more than one because this is kind of dirty, and so obviously I don't want to put my tomatoes and peppers and things like that in here because I dug up those potatoes and put them in here. But I'm thinking, oh. This spaghetti squash is gonna to need to be eaten. I think it got too cold. Um, but I'm thinking that it will be so nice to be able to change them out as I'm working out here. I love the support on the back. I can feel, you know, I probably have 40 pounds of or so in here and it doesn't feel too heavy because there's support down here and on my shoulders. I'll be able to switch them out. So this one's really dirty. So in the future, when I come out here, I'll bring more than one so that if one gets dirty, I can change before I have to wash it. So the four of you know who you are, who sent me this Rue apron. Man, there are a lot of planes going overhead today. The four of you who sent me these Rue aprons, you know who you are, and I just wanna say a huge, huge thank you. It means the world to me. Every time I go to my PO box, I honestly get a little emotional because you guys are all super generous, and I just wanna say a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for every one of you who sent me really, really kind letters. So thank you, I really appreciate it. Now we need to go harvest the green tomatoes, and there are a few red tomatoes. All right, I got three colors. I have two green ones, a gray one, and a purple one. And so I'm gonna use the purple one this time and we're gonna finish getting all these tomatoes. Let's see, oh yeah. Now we have a good pocket. So any ones that have started blushing, those ones are going to turn red inside and we're gonna ripen them inside. And the ones that are really, really green, we're gonna turn into salsa verde. So I made salsa verde last year and I really liked it with green tomatoes, but it wasn't quite as good as when you make it with tomatillos and it was more of a textural thing than a flavor thing. And I just watched a video from Holler Homestead where they made their salsa verde and they ran it through a food mill. Well, I bought myself a food mill before I watched that video, but I haven't used it yet. And I think that is going to be the perfect application to use it for the first time so that we can get a smoother salsa verde. That was the problem with making it with green tomatoes is the texture was a little bit chunky. It They just ran off. I caught them and I'm gonna show you where their new thing of running off to is the side of my house. And a couple of them, yes, they're in my front yard. So we gotta wrangle them back to the backyard. This right here is their favorite place to take dust baths, which we haven't landscaped this area yet. I did a whole video of us landscaping this area and they love, love, love dust baths here. They like it because it's under the eaves so it doesn't get rain like a lot of areas but these girls are not supposed to be up here. Come on, go, let's go. This is what I have to do, go. Come on, let's go. They listen pretty well, go. Go, come on, go. Go, 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 go. Now they're all right here. So I'm gonna let them hang out there for a little bit while I finish harvesting the tomatoes and then I'll check back with them in a few minutes. Usually takes them about 10 minutes for them to wander to the front. I kind of got them down just a little bit. We have some beautiful tomatoes over here too that are actually ripe. I'm gonna get those and I'm gonna get the green ones. 
we have some that are blushing ones like this tomatoes ripen from the inside out these ones will ripen inside if I pick this these ones might even ripen inside too but we do have some beautiful red ones I'm gonna get all these tomatoes here's some pretty pink ones these will turn red no problem they're so funny they just all decided to come back here anyway even though I didn't call them I was just about to go over there Hi. These are all my volunteer tomato plants down here. I'm going to harvest all of them as well. Hi. All right, I have everything kind of buttoned up or in the basket that needs to be harvested right now. I'm looking around. I don't think there's anything else that needs to be harvested now. We got all of the green tomatoes, tomatillos. We've got squash. Oh. I harvested these a while ago. I think it was during a garden tour or something. I can't remember. This is celery ac or celery root. I don't know if you've ever tried it. It's one of the ugliest vegetables out there. It is one of the best. It has a very mild celery flavor, but it has the texture of a potato. And to make a celery root gratin, like basically to make a celery root gratin, gratin, I'm not sure how to say it exactly. Basically like scalloped potatoes, but with half celery root, half potato. So good. It's one of my husband's favorite things. And if you've never tried it, it's going to be at your grocery store most likely. It's kind of going to be in a small section because not very many people eat it, I don't think. We got it when we were doing a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. We were a member of a farm and we were like, what is this? And it is so good. So if you haven't tried celery root, please give it a try. It's time to take all this stuff inside. So I wanna welcome you into my kitchen now because that's where we're gonna head. We're gonna go make dinner. It's not gonna be a recipe per se, it's just gonna be me hanging out in the kitchen figuring out what I've got and what I can make. So if you wanna hang out with me, join me in the kitchen. <sighs> oh my gosh. So I just went over there as I was walking and I don't know if you saw me stop with the wheelbarrow and I started pulling out sweet potatoes. The biggest sweet potatoes I grew are in the straw bales. Let's go harvest the sweet potatoes out of the straw bales. All right, so I just pulled out just for, I just was gonna do it. And the stuff is really broken down, like a lot, but look, these are some of the best sweet potatoes I actually grew. All right, let's harvest these. Now there are a lot of small ones. Like these ones are small. All right, these are small. <laughs> so maybe I just harvested the largest one I was going to. definitely just turning into dirt though which is kind of cool the rest of that was super anticlimactic they were very small now one thing to note this straw bale right here that grew the largest sweet potatoes for me I had had these straw bales out for since the spring so they had been rotting and I can definitely tell when I'm sticking my hands in them that the straw bale had started to break down and it was able to release nutrients to the potato the second thing was those sweet potato slips were sweet potato slips I started that had roots in them when I actually planted them out. So that, my theory that I need rooted sweet potato slips when I plant them to give them a head start is, is founded. So I am feeling really good about that. I mean, I'm disappointed that my sweet potatoes are this big, but that does confirm my the or that does confirm my theory that I need my sweet potato slips rooted out before they go in the ground and I need my straw bales to be seasoned before they can grow anything in them. Every time I think I can get the whole wheelbarrow in one go, I can't. <laughs> Any of the red tomatoes, I went ahead and sliced them up and I have them in my food dehydrator and I have all the way to here. I think that's two four, six trays. I'm going to get these dehydrated. I really like dehydrated tomatoes. The really nice thing about dehydrated tomatoes is that it allows you to thicken sauces. Instead of using tomato paste, which I have to buy, I can just use powdered tomatoes. And then I want to show you what I did over here. 
I just laid out my green tomatoes on a towel so that the tomatoes aren't sitting directly on my table. And the red ones that had already been ripening, those are the ones in the dehydrator. I put the more ripe ones on this side. When I'm going to make my salsa verde, whatever green tomatoes I have left, that's what I'm gonna make with the salsa verde. And then I'll figure out what to do with the red tomatoes. I also have here my wheelbarrow full of the sweet potatoes and potatoes. I'm not gonna deal with that today. I'll deal with it tomorrow. I should probably lay them out flat on cardboard, which I know I should lay them out on flat on cardboard so they can dry out, but I just don't have the energy to do that tonight. So I'm gonna do that a different night. Ignore the dishes. I'll do those tonight. I've got my bowl here. I separated all my peppers and the rest of my tomatillos in here. And when I make salsa verde, I'm gonna deal with these. My cucumbers, I'm gonna make a cucumber salad. And uh, look what I found. I didn't show this, but I found a zucchini. This is probably the last zucchini of the year, which we actually might put, no, that'll get too soggy. I got my dinner ingredients out as well. We're gonna add to our, I guess it's gonna be kind of like a calzone that I'm making for dinner. I've got mushrooms, peppers, onions, and then chicken, cheese, and my pizza dough. So I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner going. I turned the oven on because it's kind of cold in here to 400 and we're just gonna get dinner cooking. So this is my first time making this recipe. Note to self, oil the counter before you roll them out so that it does, the dough doesn't stick to the counter and do not overfill. So today is October 12th, which I haven't mentioned earlier. And it's pretty exciting because my husband just got home and decided to heat up the wood stove for the first time, which is pretty exciting. We heat our home mostly with a wood stove all winter long because we have wall cadet heaters and they're very expensive to run with electricity. We don't have central air because our house was built in the early 80s and electricity used to be cheap in the 80s in the Pacific Northwest and it's not very cheap anymore. So that's why we heat with a wood stove. So it's gonna be super fun and cozy to have that going. And then I also put some cookies in the oven. I made some cookies in the freezer cooking video that I did when I made cookies for my friend. I messed up the recipe, so they're not the perfect cookies, but they're gonna be good for dessert tonight. All right, I think dinner is done. So we definitely got a little bit of oozing of the cheese, but that's okay. It smells really good. We're gonna have my husband taste it and see if it's any good. And then here are the cookies that I messed up on, but they're edible and they'll be a really good cozy dessert. All right, so I just got myself a little piece. I just gave my husband a piece and we're gonna give it a try. Josh, this is the pesto ranch chicken. I was kind of going for like those, those Costco chicken bacon ranch things because the pesto ranch chicken is in this, so that's kind of where I was going. The recipe is at scratchpantry.com. I'll link it if you want to know the recipe for that. And what's in here is I just harvested some peppers and mushrooms. So those are our own homegrown peppers and mushrooms. There's mozzarella cheese, cheddar cheese, Parmesan cheese on the top, and yeah, so if you hear crackling, it's the wood stove. You wanna give it a try? Yeah, it smells really good. Oh, good. It's hot. Definitely hot. Mm hmm The um, addition of the onions and peppers is really nice. Add okay. some good moisture. Mm. As well as the mushrooms, too. I'm a fan. That's good. Very savory. Very, very, very savory. I wanna say a huge thank you to you for hanging out with me in my kitchen and my garden. Time is precious, and I don't take that for granted that you take time out of your day to spend time with me. I think that's awesome that we get to learn and grow together. I hope you guys are having a great night, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.